Good morning. Welcome to worship for this Pentecost Sunday. I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song is number 404. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
This morning's first reading is from Ezekiel uh, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me around all around them. There were very, very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I have prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is 104. Let us read it responsibly. How manifold are your words, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms to many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Levitian which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you and give them their food and new season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my people. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. morning's second reading is from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire 
appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elimelites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Nigeria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in their own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Israel, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my flesh upon all flesh, and our sons and daughters shall prophesy, and our young men shall see visions, and our old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the father has is mine. And for this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Alright, let me try that one more time and see if we can do that without the giant squeal. Hey, that's better. All right. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The very first thing that people wait for in our lives is a good, hard cry. And there's a reason for that. That good, hard cry means that you have strong lungs and you have taken the breath of life right into you. And honestly, there's one thing that people wait for at the very end of our lives. Our last breath. That moment where we give this breath of life, not only back to the world, but back to God who first gave it to us. And we turn ourselves over into the hands of God. Everything in between those two moments is sustained by the power of this life-giving spirit. This spirit that gives life to every single creature, as the psalmist testifies, and gives it vibrancy. But also the spirit that's capable of bringing us back to life. Back to life. When we feel as though everything is lost, there's no hope for the future, and we have no idea where we're going from here. When we're completely dried up, used up, worn out, and ready to be tossed in the dumpster. It's at precisely that moment... And precisely that moment that the Spirit comes to bring new life. Now, I know I don't do this a lot, but today I'm going to do it. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor, and I want you to say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm glad you're still here. Glad you're still here. And I'm glad you're all still here. And I'm glad that even as we went through a wearying season where we did feel used up, dried out, tired, and ready to be tossed on the heap, that we are here to share in the life-giving gift of God's Spirit and to celebrate that this has been poured out on us and across the church so that we would not only be revived, but capable of reviving others. Not just revived, but capable of reviving others. Of bringing the good word and the truth of the gospel everywhere we go into every setting and every situation. Trusting that the same spirit that brought Jesus back to life. Can you imagine the shock of that moment of that unexpected first breath in the tomb? <gasps> life, life, greater than death, greater than hatred, greater than violence, life meant to sustain not only the one in the tomb, but everyone whom he had called to be a part of his family. That is the very life, the breath that has been poured over and into us. That is the gift of God's Spirit to bring the church back to life. And so this day is a day to celebrate. It's a day to rejoice. It's a day to let go of fear a little bit. Fear has been such a big part of our lives for way too many months. Way too many months. And it's true, there's still plenty of stuff to fear, right? There's probably a driver looking to drive into you on the way home today. Watch out, pay attention, right? At the same time, we have not been called to embrace a spirit of fear, but rather a spirit of love, giving, and compassion because we understand the tremendous gift that God has given us. Every single breath from that cry to that gasp, every single one. Every one of them a gift, every one of them a joy, every one of them an opportunity to be transformed into the people that God longs for us to be, to be present for our neighbors in love, compassion, and service. And when we reach that moment where it seems like our doubts are bigger than our faith, our worries are bigger than our hopes, at that very moment, the Spirit acts for us. You ever have a day where you just sit down at the kitchen table and go, because that's all you got. You don't have any words. 
You don't have any thoughts. You're not even sure what the feelings are that are attached to that. All you have is that one gigantic sigh at the end of a hard day. Friends, that is prayer. And we have an advocate and interpreter who takes that prayer and shapes it into words that God knows and communicates not only our deepest needs to the God who loves us, but then whispers back to us, God is here. God is with us. Christ is alive. Always. Always, from now through the end of time, Christ is alive. And so are you. And so are you, animated by that same powerful breath of God that brings hope to the hopeless, that brings energy when we're tired, and that pours so much into us that it's impossible for us to contain it entirely in our own lives. The Spirit pours out with such generosity that we overflow. And one of the primary ways that we overflow is in compassionate and holy listening to our neighbors and in loving sharing of the story that we know to be the bedrock of our lives. The miracle of Pentecost is one of both speaking and listening. People longing to hear a promise from God, but worrying that no one will ever tell me, no one will know how to say it, and after all, I don't really belong here. I'm an outsider. So imagine their shock when all of a sudden they heard not only the most powerful promise and story they'd ever heard, but they heard it in a way that they could understand and embrace and digest. And it's a miracle of speaking, too. One that takes time to tell the story and to tell it well. Because you know what? No one else is going to do that for us, right? We can't expect the radio station, the television station, the Pizza Hut, that smell of pepperoni wafting over in the summertime. They're not going to tell this story for us. They all have their own stories to tell. There's not a company or a government or another organization. This is our story. And if it doesn't set us on fire, it's not going to set anyone on fire. So this day, let us be enlivened, emboldened, excited to know that this is the promise God has given to you and to me. Not only to fill our lives with this dynamic breath, but the privilege of sharing it with others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
with the church around the world, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. Your God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. <laughs> God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speak different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit, so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day especially the homebound, Alex Pritchard, Ron Painter, Elnor Jawatskowski, and Carol LaRosa. Those who are grieving or in need of medical care, the suffering, the ill, and the caregivers, especially Fred Goebel, Mary Goebel, Betty McDermott, Michael Moyer, Jeff Rossen, Crystal Weedman, John Shader, and Elliot Stevens. For those who are addicted and homeless, Help us to see your face in them and show us ways to bring comfort and aid. For those who grieve, the family and friends of Lila Onorato, Mariana Anderson, and Arnie Gustafson. We pray for our brave men and women in the military. Faustine Sorrell, Jordan Hill, Brent Jaquith, Nathan and Michelle Koski, Jacob Dio, Zachary Schaefer, and Micaiah Garland. Thank you for those who return home safely. Show us how to provide them care and understanding. Comfort those who grieve and gather around you, those who have died. Each month we pray for our church families, the Houstons, Catherine Hissel, Lynn Jeffrey, Betty Johnson, and Catherine Johnson. For our Little Lambs teachers and students, Natalie and Lori and their class, Vivian, Maverick, Emma, Tyler, McKenna, Cadence, Dahlia, and Royce. We send prayers of thanksgiving for our many blessings. Let us pray. 
God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. <laughs> Here other intercessions may be offered. eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of peace with one another. with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied.
body of Christ given for you. God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Lord Jesus. May the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song today is number 405.
Just a couple quick announcements. Um, this coming week, I will be on vacation. So please pray for us as we uh, recreate and travel. We appreciate that. If you have any pastoral care emergency needs that do pop up, you can contact Pastor Shirley at the Rutland United Methodist Church, and she will attend to you promptly. Um, also, because I won't be here next weekend, I want to make note of the fact that not this coming week, but the following week, is graduation for Little Lambs. And the program format's just a little bit different this year. Um, in order to accommodate as many of the immediate family as possible, um, only immediate family of each graduating child will be invited to attend in the sanctuary. They'll each get their own row. But for the first time ever, we're going to live stream the entire graduation uh, through our Facebook page. So if you want to see what happened with the little kids and you want to clap and cheer for them, there'll be an opportunity to watch them live on Facebook either during the graduation on Thursday night uh, or the next day. Are there other announcements that folks would like to share? Come on down to the mic so we can all hear you. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Pastor John, for letting me make this announcement. Uh, my name is Kristoff. I'm a college student from Nebraska. Uh, I go to Concordia University in Nebraska, and I'm just out here for my summer internship. And as part of that, we, uh, me and my roommate are actually looking for potentially a host home or someone who has an extra room that we could stay in over the summer just to help with offsetting costs and um, that way we also can just probably stay a little safer in the community. So if you or anyone you know has ever hosted students before or has an extra room and is looking to make a couple extra hundred dollars over the summer, we pay for all of our own expenses, work about 70 to 80 hours a week, so we're really just looking for a place to stay and uh, take a shower and keep our stuff. So I'll be in the back if you have uh, any questions or Are there any other announcements? And we're both vaccinated. I was just told to say that. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace and share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Post blues.